So I wanted to show you running the simulation just to make sure you understood where we were going. I apologize for the day in class when the projector wasn't able to display from my laptop. Um, so what I'm going to run first is the default uh, run. So if I look at run edit configurations, right now I'm not passing in any program arguments and that is okay. And so if I run this version of the simulation, what you'll see is basically there's no animals, it's just green. And in fact, um, the amount of green may uh, change over time. That the, the amount of vegetation that's in this cell, so there's only one cell, um, it may start out as a low number and then increase over time. That without any animals to eat the vegetation, eventually it's going to reach the maximum level of vegetation. And this tends to happen very quickly, but uh, there's times where if we run this enough times, you'll see the screen starts pretty dark and then quickly uh, turns um, uh, bright green. Let's see if we can get that to happen. There it was. So you saw there was a darker green at first, and then after a few half seconds, um, it turned to this this shade of green. I'll run it one more time and see if we can see the dark again. Uh, no, I guess you'll have to rerun the video, you know, rewind the video. Um, so that is the the without any animals just by default. In addition, I've provided a collection of JSON files um, in this inputs directory and so you can give the name of these files when you run the program to um, to see it under different circumstances so my my recommendation is that you first get it the simulation working with just the cell don't worry about the animals leave that part um, of the simulation commented out so ignore these parts um, and get it running just drawing the the cell um, with that green background. Once you've got that working, um, I would then add the bunnies. And so you can run simulations with only bunnies. And so my favorite is this uh, lots of bunnies one um, to see the effects. So what we can do is we can go to run and edit configurations and we can type in lots of bunnies only. So we're going to start with a huge number of bunnies. So if we look at this file, it says my max starting bunnies is 5,000. <clears> and the code in here um, is going to generate a random number. So it's going to take that maximum number of bunnies and it's going to multiply it by a random number between 0 and 1. Um, and so we're going to have somewhere between 0 and 5,000 bunnies. So on average, uh, 200 2,500 bunnies. Um, so if I go ahead and run this, what we're going to see is that initially um, there was a whole bunch of bunnies um, and then they pretty quickly died off. That if I actually drag this to the side, you can see initially there was 1,800 bunnies, but pretty quickly it leveled off to around 120 or so bunnies. And what we're seeing now is that the bunnies are actually growing up. They're getting bigger. So the dots are getting bigger. And then at some point they get big enough to have children. And so there's a wave of little tiny bunnies that come along. So here, again, the bunnies are getting big. You can see that they're starting to have children again. And, and the number of bunnies is ramping up. And as the number of bunnies ramps up, you'll see the screen get darker because with more bunnies, they tend to eat more of the vegetation. And so the amount of vegetation tends to go down and eventually that causes some of the bunnies to starve off um, and the, the, the number of bunnies goes down, the vegetation grows back, and then over time the bunnies that survive will uh, get bigger and then have little bunnies again. And so we go through this cyclic progression of um, the bunnies overeating the, the um, vegetation, the vegetation dying out, the bunnies starving, the number of bunnies goes down, the vegetation starts to grow back because there's, it's growing at a rate faster than the number of bunnies um, that are around. Uh, so the vegetation grows up, then the, the bunnies have plenty to eat, and so they eat and they get uh, bigger, and then they have baby bunnies, and then the cycle repeats. Um, so you should see this cyclic behavior um, and just throwing a large number of bunnies in is a good way to, to sort of quickly get to the, this equilibrium point. You'll see that we're floating somewhere between 80 bunnies and 110 bunnies that we sort of cycle around in that range.
Um, so the other only bunnies one starts with a much lower number of bunnies. Um, we can go ahead and run that one, but you'll see that uh, it takes longer to um, hit that equilibrium because uh, we didn't sort of jumpstart it with, uh, I don't know, we'll see what it run. So the difference here is that we never have that huge overpopulation of bunnies at the beginning. So we start out with a few bunnies and they have plenty to eat. Um, so I guess they actually get to the equilibrium faster. And then, you know, after that point, it should cycle the same way. That's so independent of initial conditions, assuming there is, you know, enough bunnies, um, uh, at least one bunny, I guess, uh, we'll get to this sort of same uh, steady state or sort of, you know, oscillating state where it's around somewhere between 80 and 110 bunnies um, and it cycles through this. Um, so you should see something like that when you when you get your bunnies working. So again, ignore the wolves at first, get your bunnies working, uh, see the simulation. When you're done with that, you know, then we can throw some predators into the mix. So um, many bunnies, few wolves, um, again, has this huge overpopulation of bunnies to start out with. Um, and it turns out, as we'll see, an overpopulation of wolves. So if we run that simulation, do, 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 change the command line argument, we're gonna pass in many bunnies, few wolves, uh, and run it again. So now you can see that there's gray dots that represent the wolves. If I drag this to the side, um, initially, in this case, there was only 10 wolves. So it turns out that's, to, that's not a huge population of wolves, um, but you'll see the same kind of uh, cyclic behavior um, that the wolves are um, gonna be sort of steadily eating the bunny, so it's, a, it's an additional pressure on the bunny population um, that they'll tend to actually to eat the little bunny or bunnies at a higher rate than the bigger bunnies. Um, and eventually we'll, we'll reach some steady state. So uh, you can see that the population of bunnies is getting as low in, as the 60s, but it's still, or oops, uh, it's down to the 30s now. Um, but uh, as the wolves tend to over farm the bunnies, you'll see that their population will go down because at some point there's not enough bunnies to feed the wolves um, and the wolves will have to compete with each other for the food and their population will go down. Um, so here the bunny population got back up to even 120 in this case. Um, but as the bunny population goes up, then the wolf population is going to grow again. So we, again, we see these oscillations between, uh, you know, the wolves, there being, you know, too much, too many bunnies for the amount of vegetation, um, you know, and the, the population of wolves, the larger that that gets. Again, see, we're getting up close to 30 here, so we're expecting that to put a lot of pressure on the bunny population. So now we're seeing the bunny population again drop towards the uh, the 60s in this case and then the the wolf population starts to go down as the bunny population goes down um, so you should see the cyclic kinds of behaviors um, that I highly encourage you to generate your own JSON files that you can change the the rate the vegetation grows what the maximum vegetation is and see what effect that has on for example the bunny population or um, you know, what happens if you start with as many wolves as bunnies that in some simulations I've seen, uh, the wolves actually eat all the bunnies and so the bunnies go extinct. Um, and then because the wolves have nothing else to eat, some short amount of time later, uh, the wolves go extinct. Um, so it's fun to play with, change the parameters. Again, you can see the bunny population got very low and that's putting a lot of pressure on the wolf population. As the wolf population goes down, um, we should see uh, the bunny population snap back, or maybe uh, maybe the bunny population is going to go extinct. Uh, it's kind of a race. Um, the 
wolves were down to as few as, oh, there they go, bunnies got extinct. Um, so, and then here we see one wolf left, oh, everybody's dead. So, this is why we don't over, over fish. Um, all right, so that's kind of what this simulator looks like. Um, the last thing I'll show you is this multiple cells version, um, which in the default version um, uh, basically just runs a bunch of um, simulations in parallel. So if I run this, um, I'll go ahead and bring up the JSON for that. You see it says it's four cells wide and four cells high. And so we're actually going to run 16 simulations in parallel. So each of these is an independent simulation. We've just we've cut the screen into these 16 different chunks. Um, but by default, there's no way for these cells to interact. Um, uh, and so we can have you know one cell down here, which apparently went extinct rather quickly. We have some cells where the the vegetation is um, being over uh, fe fed by the bunnies, and then there's other ones where the the number of bunnies, I guess, is being sufficiently kept in check by the number of wolves that the vegetation is growing. And so this is just showing you that with different initial conditions, specifically the different number of wolves and bunnies, that you can get very different behaviors. Um, so one of the extra credit um, assignments that I'll put out shortly uh, is um, that obviously uh, you have bunnies here that have no vegetation um, but there's plenty of vegetation right next to them and so uh, that we would like to teach the bunnies that uh, if they're going hungry that they may want to uh, wander around to look for better food so um, under some conditions look at these giant bunnies it's great um, uh, under some conditions that you might be better off uh, moving around, and this is not true for just the bunnies, but also for the wolves, that um, you, know, you get these bunnies that are so big that the, the wolves won't eat them because they're... Uh, um, that at some point you're better off um, moving to a different cell to wander around and go eat the food there um, and potentially there's also either more prey if you're a predator or fewer predators um, and so you can uh, live more happily. Alrighty.